ABC7 Bangor. This is ABC7 News at Noon. Multiple people were injured when a truck went through a storefront in Ellsworth yesterday. Good afternoon, I'm Susan Farley. Mainers have got some extra time to get their real ID. We'll tell you what's happening. And Bangor is looking to boost its efforts to clean up discarded needles around the city. Thank you for joining us. We'll have more on these and other stories in just a moment. First, let's check in with meteorologist Devin Biggs. Devin? Hey Susan, happy Tuesday afternoon. Your first weather forecast brought to you by Luigi and Fredericks across from Eastern Maine Medical Center, serving the greater Bangor area for over 65 years. All right, we have clouds moving in from the west to the east. There's going to be a few breaks in those clouds as well, so we will see some sunshine throughout the day. Keep those sunglasses ready, but ultimately we'll have more clouds moving in later on tonight as that next system starts to get close. So we're starting to see some development now with precipitation, mainly as rain across the northeastern states. You go into Canada, this is mainly all snow at this point, but we'll have our turn for precipitation as we head towards late tonight into parts of tomorrow, though, and some decent rainfall, too, maybe a half inch to maybe an inch possible, and maybe even more in a few spots before we're all finished up. The winds will be out of the south at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. That's the nice thing with this system. The winds will not be a huge deal either today or also tomorrow. We have forecast moving forward, upper 40s, not bad, mostly cloudy. That southeast wind getting up to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Moving ahead towards tonight, upper 30s, 30s, rain showers move in late. Let the southeast wind getting up to about 5 miles per hour. Tomorrow, rain likely. Some heavy downpours cannot be ruled out either with highs in the upper 40s. Let the southeast wind getting up to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. That hourly forecast for the rest of the afternoon period. Overall, increasing clouds. The sun may come out from time to time. Temperatures overall will be in the 40s. Your full five day forecast is coming up. Susan? Thank you, Devin. Rescuers were called to the scene of a bad accident this morning in Prospect. The call for help came in around 425 this morning. A vehicle had rolled over on Fort Knox Road and became pinned against some trees. Bucksport rescuers were also called to the scene with their jaws of life equipment to help free a man who was trapped inside the wreckage. There's no word on his condition. We'll have more information as it becomes available. Seven people were rushed to the hospital after a truck crashed through a storefront in Ellsworth Monday morning. It happened around 145 at the Dollar Tree on High Street. Police say it appears the elderly driver was trying to park when the truck accelerated, hit a parked car, and smashed through the glass windows and glass doors at the front of the building. The truck ended up 20 feet inside the store. Five people inside the building were injured, but police say none of the injuries appear to be life-threatening. Two people inside the truck were also taken to the hospital. The Ellsworth Code Enforcement Officer closed the building for safety reasons after the accident. The incident is still under investigation. Maine State Police have released more details surrounding a fatal crash in Bangor on Friday night that killed a pedestrian. At 6-18 Friday, Maine State Police responded to the crash at the exit 184 off I-95 in Bangor. They say 36-year-old Tracy Pelletier of Orno was driving a Honda Civic when she struck a pedestrian who was walking on the Union Street exit off-ramp. That pedestrian was 28-year-old Ryan Hersey of Enfield. Police say the preliminary investigation indicates Hersey ran out of gas and exited his vehicle to walk to Union Street. He was wearing a dark hooded sweatshirt. The hood was pulled up when he was struck by Pelletier's vehicle. They say Pelletier immediately called 911 and Bangor Rescue transported Hersey to Northern Light Eastern Maine Medical Center in Bangor, where he died from his injuries. The preliminary investigation does not show any impairment or distraction issues with Pelletier, but the investigation remains on Going, Hersey's family has established a GoFundMe page to help cover his funeral expenses. If you haven't already gotten your real ID and were worried you'd miss the deadline, you've got some extra time. Secretary of State Shanabello says the U.S. Department of Homeland Security will be delaying enforcement of real ID requirements for domestic flights and other activities by almost two and a half years. The new deadline is now May 7, 2025. According to Bellows, only 14.1 percent of the drivers licensed and state ID holders have real ID compliant credentials. A reminder that while non-real ID compliant credentials may be renewed online, real ID compliant licenses and IDs must be obtained in person at your local BMV branch. Bangor is looking to boost its efforts to clean up discarded needles around the city. Matthew Jaronsik has more. Concerns are growing about the number of used and discarded needles laying around Bangor. 
So the city's public health department is looking to team up with the state in various organizations to distribute the sterile syringes and pick up the used ones. Recovery centers in the area say they are on board with this decision. I love it. I think it's great. Um, they've always been a part of the Gather Place. Um, the city has always been a big a part of that with us. So I'm really glad that they're stepping up and doing even more. The city wants to craft a plan to address the issue, which could possibly involve more funding for the necessary resources. Even with 10 community disposal boxes scattered across the city, some residents don't believe this is enough. These needle exchange boxes, uh, I feel like they put them in, but they don't really maintain them. Others say they appreciate that Bangor is at least doing something to prevent the situation from escalating. It seems like they're doing pretty decent. Um, I haven't really noticed a lot of needles around, but um, it could be better, but it also could be worse. According to the Maine Center for Disease Control and Prevention, the state collected a little more than 2 million used syringes while distributing more than 2 million new syringes last year. In order to truly address the situation, Mansion Church Pastor Terry Dinkins says we need to get to the core of the problem. I believe in our, in our city or in our area we need more detox centers, more rehabs uh, to help the people uh, to get off the drugs. And I think that's, we should really focus on them and to help them to get off the drugs and then we wouldn't have this needle problem. I did speak to Bangor Public Health Director Patty Hamilton and she did confirm the city is working on a plan but could not confirm anything else. Reporting from Bangor, Matthew Jaroncic, ABC7 and Fox 22. Coming up on ABC7 News at noon, there's an effort to expand the child tax credit permanently. We'll be right back. Attention Medicare beneficiaries. Have both Medicare and Medicaid? Now's the time to explore your options and choose the coverage that's right for you. Choose a plan that offers you more benefits at no additional cost. Millions of members turn to WellCare for benefits and services that go beyond basic Medicare and help them lead better, healthier lives. Choose a plan with zero or low monthly premiums, co-pays, and deductibles. And with WellCare, you don't just pay less, you get more. More dental with comprehensive coverage, including dentures and crowns. More vision and hearing with an eyewear allowance and hearing aids. Plus, prescription drug coverage with $0 preferred generics and free home delivery. Call us at 1-877-267-8416 to speak to a friendly licensed representative and request a free all-in-one guide. There's no obligation. We're here to help you review your options to see if a WellCare plan is the right decision for you. WellCare has a large network of quality doctors and specialists. Plus, we offer PPOD SNPs with the freedom and flexibility to choose your preferred provider in some areas. Enjoy free over-the-counter health care items and free groceries with a healthy food card. Plus, free transportation to doctors and pharmacies and free meals delivered to your home. Get convenient access to care with our telehealth services, including online doctor visits and a free gym membership with online classes. WellCare is a leader in government-sponsored health care. It has been serving those with Medicare, Medicaid, and prescription drug for more than 35 years. Call now. We're here to answer your questions and even assist in rolling you over the phone. Choose the company that puts your health first. WellCare. Medicare done well. Call now and get a free copy of our all-in-one guide. 1-877-267-8416. Merry Christmas from Sula's Hearing Aid Center. To all my patients, thank you for letting me help you hear better. Happy Holidays from Central Maine Denture and Licensed Denturist Patrick Allen, creating smiles with private care and premium service. Carpet One of Bangor would like to wish everyone a safe and happy holiday season. You're watching ABC7 Bangor.
The Maine People's Alliance is urging Congress to expand the child tax credit for its year-end-of-year year spending. The program was temporarily expanded last year in the American Rescue Plan Act, giving millions of low-income families help with both caring for their children and purchasing necessities. Maine People's Alliance hosted an in-person press conference on the matter. Stakeholders said more mil millions of children and their families across the country will be at risk of falling into poverty. The reference point here in Maine, the failure to act on this is risks putting 49,000 children back into poverty. In response, a representative for Congressman Golden's office issued a statement saying, quote, as Congressman Golden made clear with his votes last year, he opposes spending taxpayer money to households making as much as $400,000 a year. He believes the child tax credit should be targeted toward working class families and used to prevent and reduce poverty. He will review any proposal that comes up for a vote in the House to ensure it goes to families who truly need it and to make sure that it is paid for and does not increase the current budget deficit, end quote. Joel Stekas has been announced as winner for the Somerset County Commissioner's race following Monday's recount. Secretary of State Shana Bellows announced a recount following Stekas' win by a one-vote margin. Under state law, Lloyd Trafton was within his legal right to request a recount three days following election results in close races. The recount verified results revealing Stekas actually claims a victory by two votes. Bellow says the recount shows election accuracy. We want voters to know that every vote matters, every vote counts, and every vote will be counted. They're not always a one vote difference. This one was particularly unique in that it was a single vote that differentiated the winner from the loser. Final vote tallies show 1,273 votes for Stekis and 1,271 votes for past commissioner Lloyd Trafton. Every Christmas season, the Salvation Army's red kettles appear outside area stores along with volunteer bell ringers. Shoppers and those just passing by are encouraged to donate what they can to the Salvation Army's red kettle campaign. This is the nonprofit's biggest annual fundraiser and one that helps the Salvation Army provide food, coats and Christmas gifts to those in need. We have only a limited amount of days that we can do kettles, which is such a large portion of our budget. And we really do need that money to, to do Christmas and to also survive the rest of the year. So it is important if there's an availability, if you have a way of giving some time to help us ring those bells, we desperately need that. If you or someone you know is able to be a volunteer bell ringer, contact the Salvation Army on Park Street in Bangor at 941-2990. Maine Housing recently announced a special project in partnership with the Genesis Fund to expand affordable housing. A.J. Douglas heard from project leaders on how this initiative will benefit Mainers. A nonprofit community developer known as the Genesis Fund was recently awarded a contract with Maine Housing to offer technical assistance and consulting to promote affordable housing options throughout the state. We are faced with an unprecedented need in the state of Maine. Uh, we need about 25,000 additional affordable housing units. In order to make that happen, we need to find new developer partners who can create this housing. Maybe they have never developed a, a, an affordable housing project, but they have a keen interest in wanting to and starting to, and they've aligned their local community to do so. So that's our job is to go in and help them execute on that. Egan says the Genesis Fund looks to offer long-term solutions to those working to transition out of temporary housing. Our program is designed to produce permanent housing uh, eventually for folks moving out of transitional or emergency housing to have an affordable place that they can move into. The Genesis Fund plans to announce scheduled informational sessions that will take place online and in person. To learn more, log on to thegenesisfund.org. In Bangor, A.J. Douglas, ABC 7, Fox 22. After the break, we'll take a look at a high-stakes Senate runoff race in Georgia that's underway. That's next. Did you know that it's possible to buy the wrong type of flooring for your home? Whether you're a do-it-yourselfer or a professional contractor, the experts at Don DeKal Mainwood Floors are here to help, offering solid pro advice from choosing the right material and color to installation. Don DeKal features the highest quality hardwood flooring sourced from lumber right here in Maine, from Maine traditions. Not only will you get a floor you'll love, you'll get a floor that will last. Don DeKal Mainwood Floors, buy from the best, forget the rest.
whether you're hurt by a box truck or by any commercial vehicle. You may have a big case worth big money if you've been hurt by any commercial truck. Call the twos. We win for you. Hurt by a commercial truck? Come out on top. Call the twos. When the Coach House Restaurant wants to know the local forecast, they log on to foxbangor.com. The Coach House Restaurant, family dining at its best with fine home-cooked meals, delicious homemade desserts, and a large menu of tasty offerings for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. One Prilosec OTC each morning blocks heartburn all day and all night. Prilosec OTC reduces excess acid for 24 hours, blocking heartburn before it starts. One pill a day, 24 hours, zero heartburn. Restless nights fogging up your day? Tonight, try new Zequil Pure Z Sleep Plus Next Day Energy with melatonin to help you fall asleep naturally, plus extended release B vitamins. Wake up feeling refreshed. Pure Z's. Sleep better. Wake up your best. If I don't hear from you Show, dot dot dot. Am I supposed to read the dot dot dot? Brandywine Graphics makes it easy. We are the top source for screen printing, embroidery, branded merchandise, and direct-to-garment printing. With 25 years experience, state-of-the-art equipment, and a commitment to excellence, why trust your apparel products with anyone else? And now, Brandywine Graphics can easily launch online stores for your school or organization. Simply design your products from brands like Eddie Bauer, Carhartt, and more. Share the link and we'll do the rest. Like we said, Brandywine Graphics makes it easy. Find out more at brandywinegraphics.com or at our Hamden location. All eyes are on the state of Georgia, where a high-stakes Senate runoff race is underway. Although Democrats already hold the Senate majority, both parties are calling Georgia a must-win. ABC's Justin Finch is following the latest from Washington. Election Day again in Georgia, now holding the nation's final Senate race. An extended campaign for incumbent Democrat Raphael Warnock and his Republican challenger Herschel Walker. After neither won 50 percent of the vote on Election Day, sending the race to a runoff. The stakes are high and the differences between me and my opponent are too wide for us to sleep. This is about turnout and, and now that means that we got to get in the game. Georgia breaking records with more than 1.8 million voters casting early ballots. The state's top election officials sensing voters are not only energized, but also informed, aware that Georgia's open Senate seat could tip or balance the Senate power scale. I think people understand that 50-50 uh, versus 51-49 is probably a big deal. The Georgia Senate race also shattering spending records with reports Warnock's team spent close to $170 million, more than doubling Walker's roughly $60 million. Political parties spending even more and deploying super surrogates. Former President Trump holding a teller rally for Walker. President Biden touting Warnock's record in an Atlanta radio interview. All the things that Reverend Warnock has supported are things that the people of Georgia care a great deal about. For example, to not have the prescription drug costs go up, actually come down. Walker closing his campaign by painting Warnock as a rubber stamp for Biden while separating himself from Trump and instead siding with popular Georgia Governor Brian Kemp. And now it's all in the hands of voters. Early voting so far appears to advantage Democrats, but high turnout from Republicans today could cut into that lead. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. Now to the Supreme Court hearing oral arguments in a case that at its core asked this question. Can some businesses turn away same-sex couples as customers? And what the justices signaled. Now to Terry Morin, who has the story. Lori Smith designs websites in Colorado, but she doesn't want to serve gay couples because of her religious beliefs. Colorado's Anti-Discrimination Act prohibits discriminating against LGBTQ people and requires that any business that's open to the general public must serve all equally. A website is my canvas, and I cherish the freedom to express unique and custom messages that celebrate causes that I'm passionate about. 
Smith says obeying that law would effectively force her to endorse gay marriage and violate her First Amendment right to freedom of speech. For more than two hours of sometimes sharp arguments today, the justices clashed over her case, but it was clear that the court's strong 6-3 to three majority is sympathetic to her claim. Justice Samuel Alito suggesting that if Smith can be made to serve gay couples, so could someone who helps couples write their ceremonies. But the liberals pushed back hard, just as Sonia Sotomayor grilling Smith's lawyer about other issues where people might have religious or ideological objections. You're saying, I don't want to serve a particular person, a disabled person, a black or white couple, a disabled couple, a, uh, a gay couple. You're basing it not on the nature of the message, you're basing it on who you're serving. And Justice Ketanji Brown Jackson, who, like Justice Clarence Thomas, the court's other black justice, is married to a white person, said history shows religion has been used to justify discrimination. Historically, opposition to interracial marriages and to integration in many instances was on religious grounds. Many of the questions raised in court in this case were thought to have been settled long ago during the civil rights era by public accommodations laws passed after lunch counter sit-ins and other protests against businesses. Those laws requiring businesses open to the general public to serve all equally. This case could change that and more. Terry Moran, ABC News, the Supreme Court. COVID-19 quarantine recommendations may seem completely arbitrary, but there's actually science involved in figuring out how long you should stay away from others after you may have been exposed. ABC's Justin Finch explains. Originally, we were all supposed to quarantine for at least 14 days if exposed to COVID-19. Now, the CDC is recommending that you wear a mask for a full 10 days and watch out for symptoms such as fever, cough, or shortness of breath. On day six, try to get tested, even if you don't feel sick. The reason for all these changes may be due to something called the incubation period, or the time between being exposed and when you start to feel symptoms or test positive. A recent study found that patients infected with Omicron tended to know they were sick 1.5 days sooner than patients infected with the previous variant. With the original COVID strain, people typically found out they were sick within five days, but with Omicron, it was only 3.5 days. As variants may continue to emerge, it's important to check in with the CDC and your local health department for the most up-to-date guidance. The latest information can be found on their websites. With this Medical Minute, I'm Justin Finch, ABC News. When we return, Devin Biggs has your five-day forecast. Winning car accident cases is what we do. I injured my hip and they got me $260,000. What did the twos do for you? Lowry and Associates got me $350,000. We win for you. Two, 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 22, 22. Wings, Wings, Wings is hiring, hiring, hiring. Come work at Wings, Wings, Wings. Wings is number one. Wings does case management. Bring hope to families by working at Wings, Wings, Wings. wings, wings. I work at Wings. I work at Wings. Come work at Wings! Wings, 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 ranked one of the best places to work in Maine for the last five years in a row. Have you ever walked into a jewelry store and just gotten overwhelmed? Pushy salesmen, sky-high prices, and they don't even have what you want. Well, that's not the experience you get from Quality Jewelers. Our team does not work on commission, so that means our common goal of finding you the perfect piece is paramount. Our mission is to give you the best experience possible, providing service after the sale and earning your business for life. So make those memories with us here at Quality Jewelers. Quality Jewelers, locally owned and operated, Penobscot Plaza, Bangor. Merry Christmas to all our friends and customers from McCusick Petroleum, 32 Summer Street, Dover Foxcroft. Happy Holidays from Leo & Sons Auto Repair, a family-owned business providing fast and dependable auto repair services. Happy Holidays from your neighborhood pharmacy, Carol Drug. With a little bit of everything, you are sure to leave with what you need. 
Whenever Maine Wood Floors wants to know the weather, they log on to foxbangor.com. Whether you're searching to add beauty with a new hardwood floor or need to restore your old one, Maine Wood Floors is your hardwood flooring expert in Midcoast, Maine. Welcome back. Let's check in with Devin Biggs and get your full forecast. Devin? All righty. Happy Tuesday afternoon. Your full weather forecast brought to you by Scott's Recreation, New England's largest trailer dealer, home of Maine's lowest camper and tractor prices, with locations in Turner, Manchester, Herman, and Orono, Maine. All righty. Here we go. Clouds are moving through this afternoon, but notice there's a few breaks that are developing with those clouds as well. So, I mean, sunshine will be peeking through from time to time. Keep those sunglasses ready, even though the clouds might be moving through right now. Our next system, located right about over here, here, though, along this warm front as well, and a cold front right about here. This cold front ultimately will take over, and it's going to be moving in very slowly. Now, will give us our next turn for the rain. That'll begin to move in tonight and a parts of tomorrow, and some decent rainfall expected as well. We'll break that down coming up in a little bit. Some winds from time to time reaching up to 15 to 20 miles per hour, depending on where you're at across parts of the state. But we're going to keep that wind kind of stable as we head towards tomorrow, too. So it's not going to be a huge deal, except for maybe Washington County. There's some gusts up to 25 miles per hour from time to time. Wave heights are not bad right now. Three to four feet, according to some of the buoys. No advisories up at this point. So the wave heights will remain rather reasonable moving forward. Our average high is 38 degrees. Upper 40s is what we'll do today and tomorrow. So not bad out there temperature-wise. We'll fall into the mid-40s Thursday and maybe cool off a little bit more during the afternoon period as that front moves through. Back in the upper 30s Friday and a Saturday with the mid-30s returning Sunday and also a near Monday. Increasing clouds will be the general idea today. Maybe some rain in the western parts of the state. We'll have to wait until tonight, late tonight, in the parts of tomorrow morning for the rain to get going. We're going to keep this going for most of the day Wednesday. Some heavy downpours cannot be ruled out either, especially in the eastern ends of the state. And we'll have to wait till at least early Thursday morning for all the precipitation to start to get out of here. So how much rain we're going to run is at least for this round only. With decent rainfall in the way, some areas could see up to a half an inch before we're all finished up. Maybe up to an inch and maybe an inch and a half in the eastern parts of the state before we're all finished up. So be ready for some decent rainfall in, in, across a good part of the state. So upper 40s today, mostly cloudy with that southeast wind getting up to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Tonight, upper 30s, rain showers move in late, with that southeast wind getting up to about 5 miles per hour. Moving ahead towards tomorrow, upper 40s on the way, rain likely, southeast wind getting up to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Scott's Recreation extended forecast, the rain is for your Thursday, will become partly cloudy with highs in the mid 40s. Upper 30s on Friday, mostly cloudy with a slight chance for rain showers, and a slight chance for rain and snow showers on Saturday. Otherwise, mostly cloudy with highs in the upper 30s. Thank you, Devin. During the holiday season, gift cards are often an easy gift and an easy target for scammers. Cybersecurity experts say scammers can steal gift cards and use the information on it. To protect yourself when buying a gift card in person, make sure the package hasn't been tampered with. Also, double-check that there is nothing suspicious on the packaging. Scammers often make it seem as though the package is still sealed. You can also purchase gift cards from legitimate online retailers. Tech experts say parents who love to share information about their kids on social media are creating more cybersecurity risks. A Wall Street Journal report says the more parents post information, including names, birth dates, and milestones, the greater the risk that cybersecurity crimes will happen. A study says the average child will have 1,500 photos of themselves online by their fifth birthday. Barclays Bank warns that there, by 2030, there could be 7.4 million identity thefts a year because of sharenting when parents post too much info online and the info is hacked or bought on the dark web. The taste of blueberry pancakes is coming to cereal bowls everywhere. General Mills and IHOP have teamed up to make IHOP mini pancake cereal, blueberry and syrup. It's a limited edition cereal and will be available on store shelves beginning this month. It will be available across the country in January. Sounds pretty yummy. That's all for ABC 7 News at noon. Thanks for watching. I'm Susan Farley. We'll see you this evening with Beth Jones and Peter Dubois on ABC 7 News at 6. Have a great afternoon.